we're going to draw the orbital overlap diagram for molecular oxygen, that is the molecule O2. Now this video is going to assume there is a double bond between those two atoms. Once you get to like university, you might realize that because of molecular orbital theory, you can treat this as what's called a di-radical. There's bonding and anti-bonding orbitals. That's not what I'm doing. I'm doing regular high school hybridization style stuff. The Lewis structure, 4O2, that satisfies the octet rule, has a double bond written between the two O's. That means there is a sigma bond, which is the first bond between any two atoms, and a pi bond, which is the second or third bond between any two atoms. That pi bond means that you need a leftover 2p orbital when you hybridize. Let me show you. This is the electron configuration diagram for unhybridized oxygen. I'm showing the first shell here just to emphasize that it's not involved. Oxygen has eight electrons total, two in the first shell, six in the second shell. In the second shell, it's distributed 2s2, 2p4. Just, it's just the way it is when you have eight electrons. But in this molecule, you need a sigma bond and a pi bond. Therefore, the hybridized version of this oxygen has one of these 2p orbitals left over, and the s and the other 2p orbitals hybridize together. That sigma bond that lone pair and that lone pair can all be in hybridized orbitals, but the pi bond needs a leftover 2p. So an s and two of the p's combine to make what we call sp2 hybridized orbitals. Get it? An s and two of the p's. I'm putting them energy-wise midway between s and p, as long as they're in between the s's and p's and not like on the same line or above or below. You're going to be fine because they are combining to make this medium energy orbital. Sure, I have the 1s as well, but it's not involved in bonding, so I'm just going to stick it there. Now I'm going to distribute these electrons around. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I'm going to draw it this way, even though it violates the Aufbau principle, because I know that I have two lone pairs... One, two, uh, get it. And I need a sigma bond and a pi bond. So I know the Aufbau principle says go from the bottom up, and this is technically a violation of it, but we have to overlook that in order to explain how the hybridized orbitals work. Now you came for the orbital overlap diagram. I needed to know what the hybridization was before I could draw them. SP2 hybridized orbitals arrange themselves in a trigonal planar way around each oxygen. So I can put my O here and I can put my other O here, but now I need trigonal planar hybrid orbitals. I'm going to draw one coming out this way. That's straight to the right from this oxygen. And I'm going to try to draw the other two as though they're coming out of the page and going into the page. Here's one Here's another one. We're trying to add some three-dimensionality to this. These three hybrid orbitals are arranged something like this. There's one straight to the right, one going backwards, and one coming out at you. The real key behind this orbital overlap diagram is the leftover 2p orbital. Now, a 2p orbital is shaped like a peanut, the P actually stands for something German, I think. I can't remember. That 2P orbital, I'm going to do this in a different color just to emphasize it. Maybe I'll just do it in a different kind of blue. It goes above and below the bond axis for the sigma bond. I know I've drawn two things here, but a 2P orbital is the peanut that goes above and below. The hybridized orbitals, one, two, three, only get one balloon each. A 2p orbital gets above and below. Now I have to do the same thing on this oxygen, so I'm just going to mirror it, and I'm going to make sure that my two balloons in the middle meet. 
that's going to be the sigma bond between the two. This one's coming out at you, this one's going back into the page, and I have a 2p orbital that goes above and below the bond axis here as well. Oh yeah, we're so close. Now, I'm going to draw in my electrons just to show you what's what here. Oh, I wish I had my orange. Oh well. This sigma bond is made of two electrons. One, two. It's this from one of the oxygens and then this again from the other oxygen atom. The sharing of those two electrons forms that sigma bond. In order to show that the two P's are overlapping, and we call this a side-to-side -side overlap above and below the bond axis, I want you to draw yourself a line that goes that connects the two, two P orbitals on the top side and on the bottom side. And I realize that this is frustrating as well. You've drawn two lines as well as the sigma bond. But this is like half of a pi bond, and then this is the completion of that pi bond. So here, I'll draw that as the sigma. I'm going to draw this as the pi. But you need to know that these two yellow lines combine to make a, a pi bond. And in addition, I have two lone pairs on each oxygen. That's what the other hybridized orbitals were for. There's a lone pair. There's a lone pair. There's a lone pair. And there's a lone pair. If you really want to put the electrons in the pi bond, you can do that too. They're, they're, you can think about them circulating, like in a circle here, but that's not how electrons move. So don't worry about it. Cool. This is the orbital overlap diagram for oxygen. Congratulations, you're done. Does your teacher require you to write out what each orbital is? I'll do that here with you. This here is an oxygen sp2 hybridized orbital. This is an OSP2. This is an O2P. It is a leftover 2P orbital. Don't label it here as well. You'll lead your viewers or like readers to think that there are two of them. There's a single 2P orbital here. See? And it just happens to be drawn this way because that's the shape of them. I don't know. And as well, this is an OSP2. OSP2 here, OSP2 here, OSP2 here, O2P here. Great. I like it. Thanks for being with me. And if you have any questions, hit me up in the comments. Best of luck.